Hey there Dan Gastu here. Today's video is about our first two weeks in Bundaberg and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. We're here in Burnett Heads now with Damien and Jess from Project Brewpeg. First thing we did was jump in the car and drive into Bundaberg Central and go to the scrapyard and see what steel we could find for the jobs I needed to do. All right, the work begins just uh, at the scrapyard, trying to find some steel to fix the railings at the moment. Uh, also do the vent going to the funnel to get air down into the cabin. Lots of bits and pieces. After picking up the steel, we headed back to the marina where Renko was in a berth waiting for our spot to be available on the hard stand. There were plenty of jobs I could do getting things fabricated before Renko comes out of the water, so I decided to get on with those. The first of it being a new table for the back deck. Damien and Jess made this really nice table for inside brew people. I want to copy it, but they won't let me. I think I'll just try and measure it from out here. Rounded nicely. Apparently you got the sheet of uh, finger jointed teak from Bunnings. That's a good tip. <laughs> I found the template that uh, Damien used to make his, so I'm going to pinch it and copy it. Teak is a very oily timber that doesn't take a coating of epoxy very easily. Started with a big acetone wash and then tried using a little bit of heat to thin it out and get it to soak in a bit more. The nice thing about the torch is it softens it up a bit so you can tip it without just dragging a skin across. In the end, sanding that first epoxy coat right down gave me a smooth surface to put multiple layers of uh, UV resistant polyurethane on, so worked out all right. After that, we need to do some sandblasting, so it was time to dry a whole lot of sand Unfortunately, being winter, it's not that warm, so it's a slow process. But once we had the dry sand, we needed to get into the sifter and get all the large lumps out. First thing to get blasted was a bronze hatch that Damien gave me that he had removed from Brewpeg that's going to go between the cabin and the engine bay. Here's what these hatches look like pre-sandblasting. Sandblasting's what's been here in the background going on as well. And this is what it looks like after sandblasting. So it came up really nicely. I'm putting a little bit of clear coat on it just to stop it going too green afterwards. The glass needs replacing, which is why I didn't bother taking it out to blast it. I'll leave it for now so that I can, uh, you know, block the space off. But uh, I'll put a brand new piece of glass and a brand new seal and everything down the track. That looks really good. Thank you, Damien. I tried putting the knobs from the hatch onto the wire wheel, but the paint was really tough. So I softened it with the heat gun first and then put on the wire wheel again. Alright, they cleaned up pretty well. I'm going to give them a little bit of a soak in vinegar. See if that helps. Still in the marine at the moment and it's raining, but we'll push on. These are shelves going down in the cabin for clothes and things. Got them all painted except where I'm welding here. Just ground this off. I'm going to screw this timber onto the front. I'm going to have timber all round as sort of a lip on the shelf. But I'm just going to put the fronts on now because we'll be welding near the side timber. I'm going to screw the timber onto the front of the shelves. The plan is just to use really short screws, go through the steel this way so that there's no visible screws on the outside. Shorter one here is going on the bottom as the V comes down. I'll put this one in first, I think. Another thing that's been broken for ages was this hatch down to the cabin. Oh, I've got some new hardwood. The original timber frame around the hatch was a softwood and it had broken. So I've got a new hardwood, just got to drill new hinges, which I've also riveted to the hatch. And we'll get this installed and um, finally have that problem solved.
Okay, final piece of the puzzle now is this spring needs to be attached here so it holds the hatch up and then you just push it in to close it down. So we need a screw about there. This bottom shelf's going quite low down. Let's pick a height, any height. Let's call it a hundred. Hundred millimeters. See if we can shed a bit of light on the situation. This is my reading lamp that I sort of clamped up here, same one as in the wheelhouse. But they're kind of cool. They have uh, modes, so we can go brighter. Then they have brightness settings too. Oh, and thank you. This is uh, an old inverter Leon gave me. I say old, old as in he gave it to me a while ago. And it's been perfect down here. Two 240 volt sockets, two USBs. Absolutely ideal for here. So thank you, Leon. Much appreciated, finally found a home for that one. I don't know why this Boswell welding gear is so cheap. They even think to give you a spare left-handed glove. No rights, but two lefts, that's great. Double the value. Nice one. Fumey. It's like a Cheech and Chong movie. To get these shelves in, I'm just going to take the ladder out temporarily. Putting the sides on first because the shelves cover the screw heads for these sides. And then we'll drop the bottoms in. I've recovered my exhaust tip from the bottom of the harbour after Damien threw it overboard. It was never supposed to be flared at both ends, that was a bit of an accident by the company that supplied it. Uh, but cut it to 45, now I'm just going to clean it up with a flap disc and pop it back on. Put it back. Where's the muffler? <laughs> I'm watching you. You are actually going to face it backwards. <laughs> Lucky for you, I'm uh, willing to rise above this sort of petty thing and not retaliate in any way whatsoever. <laughs> sure. Okay, the day has arrived. Uh, we're just waiting for the travel lift to come out and then we're going to scoot around and go up on the hard stand next to Brewpig. Step one is getting everything off the deck and this, given the arrangement of stairs here and everything, is why I did this with the pelican clips. So I can relatively quickly get these off, Let's get this out and then I'll use this to lower stuff down below, particularly heavy little things like lead weights etc. This is the template for the hatch. It needs to be high enough up to clear the mattress and needs to be low enough to give us a good 
chunk of uh, steel left act as a rib across the back here. Uh, this timber was here just so that the ply and carpet could go on. That can all go. This bracing on the bulkhead is only stitch welded. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is cut into it in places where there's no welding so I can take a section out. Then I'll turn this template into a, like a ring template that I can press against where there's gaps then. And then we can mark the bulkhead and cut it out. I think that's going to be the easiest way. <laughs> So the shelves are up now. Oh, bloody awesome. Yeah, they're actually quite nice. I like them. Size, eh? Yeah, they just mean we can keep our clothes from being just yeah. rubbish and then yeah, yeah. look, all it is is somewhere to store clothes and, and kip, but... It's actually quite big then. I didn't realise how big this was. Well, yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, we took the jacuzzi out in the old suite <laughs> from back there. That's all gone now. So, yeah. that, so that cupboard's going to get rebuilt to be a little bookshelf and yeah, then nice. a little bit of storage for the bed head too. Yeah, cool. So I looked at this, and then if I get the hatch oh, I see out that. in the ballpark, yeah, right. um, it just clears the mattress. Yeah, right. And then just whish Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, sweet. Okay, plan's coming together. Now, need to remark. It was 125. It's still down here. It's going to be 120, I imagine. After the world, I don't really want access to the engine bay as such. I just want to be able to see the Detroit from bed. All right, there it is. The hatch. It's getting late in the afternoon, day one. So I think I'll do the plasma cut fresh rather than getting everything unpacked and doing it right now, but good to go for the morning, I reckon. Having this hatch cut will make access to the engine bay easier, of course, uh, but it also means we can put the table over the engine hatch on top um, without feeling like we need to open that to check oil or to do trivial things like that. So it's really gonna make a big difference to day-to-day -day life on the boat and the way it's fitted out and the way I do maintenance jobs. Good first job to get knocked over. Well, other than the shelves, which are over there. That's made a huge difference too. Previously there was just this space behind the ladder that was really sort of no man's land. So it's really nice turning that into storage for clothes and blankets and towels, etc. It's worked out really well. This is the second reservoir for Damien's air compressor. It's actually quite a good way to trap moisture. I'm gonna get this on deck for the plasma cutter because it's got quite a short hose on the outlet side. So we'll just winch it up with the crane. I will. Yes. Promise. Yeah. We'll just put a Cummins engine on this yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> A local viewer, Adam, came down to give us a hand, and as you can tell from the comments, comments, he fitted in quite well. He was also great on the tools, so really handy guy to have around. Thank you, Adam. The first thing Adam and I cut off was the aft section of the port side bulwark to give us access to the deck. Next up we cut out the hatch between the cabin and the engine bay. Adam cut with the plasma cutter on the cabin side and I caught all the sparks and slag using a metal fire bucket on the engine bay side. All right, there is the hatch plasma cut out. I need to cut the ribs back a little bit further for the frame of the hatch, but 
getting very close to putting that in. Next though, I'm going to cut out the old paddle wheel that's below the bed here. I'll show you that. You can see here, it's quite crusty and rusty around it. So rather than trying to do anything about that, I'm just going to cut it right out, put some new steel in, paint it all up, and that's just one, one less place that could possibly go wrong down the track. And here it is. Got to replace this with just a plain bit of new 4 mil steel. I think it's just one less point of failure that doesn't need to be in the boat, given it doesn't go anywhere. It was always just cut wires. So glad that's gone finally. The table is also ready to go now. It's had a fair few coats of uh, polyurethane, epoxy on the bottom, polyurethane on top. Teak, you know, couldn't just be left. It's very robust timber, but I think it'll stay looking nicer that way. Damien sandblasted the old frame that the fridge was sitting on, and then Vicky's painted it again, so that's looking much nicer. Before, you could see it had that white paint. It was very rusty because it was basically painted on mill scale. Now it's sandblasted. It should last a long, long time. The doors are also off the cabin, getting sanded, repaired. I think we'll just epoxy them up for now but they should be much nicer and we're going to redo sliders so they move much more smoothly as well. Get up, we've got heaps of work to do. Damien had a go at me yesterday for uh, not getting up early enough and working hard enough. So uh, I've decided up at the crack of dawn this morning and uh, I'm gonna, a uh, bit of a nice surprise for him, give him a hand and uh, start getting some of the rust off his patch so that he can paint it. Right. Now, I know there's a bulkhead about here, and uh, so Damien sort of sleeps about here. I don't want to wake him up, I'm not a cruel man, so uh, I'll start with this compartment so I don't uh, annoy him. This is the hotel I'll be staying in until Damien calms down about waking him up this morning. Fear not though, in the morning I'll be back at the boat and starting to cut out all the rust from the back deck, so I'll be showing you that next week. All right, we'll take care, I'll catch you then, see ya. I'm trying to stay out of the rain, Daisy. <laughs> Daffy's just poking her head up sitting on the stairs. <laughs> Go under the house. I think because she's scared of the bush turkey, she's actually staying close. Daisy spent a lot more time near the front door. Yeah, right. And then she obviously stays wherever Daffy is most of the time too. Yeah, right. And then Daffy likes somewhere to sit because her leg gets sore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it ends up being just the best plan for everyone. Yeah, I've got water under there.